Hi, everyone. My name is Alexandra Giordano. Um, I also go by Sasha Giordano, that's my nickname, and I am here to present to you how to write an artist's bio. So we're gonna kind of go through this whole um, process and hopefully by the end of this, you're going to figure out a really good strategy of how to present a bio about yourself and, and your work a little bit um, so that you have better opportunities for yourself. So we're gonna start here with my first image of who you are. And that's something to kind of think about in regard to writing your bio and how that differs from an artist's statement, right? So an artist's statement is going to be more about the work and a bio is going to be more about you. And I want you to think Van Gogh, right? I want you to think of Vincent Van Gogh. We understand his work in a deeper way because we feel as though we know him. And we know him because he documented his life so wonderfully um, and tragically at times through letters to his brother Theo. So in a sense, we have an understanding of his biography and we engage with his, in his work, with his work in a very different way. So the quote I have here for you, they say, and I'm willing to believe it, that it is difficult to know yourself, but it isn't easy to paint yourself either. And as artists, you all know that, right? Like we struggle with our stories and our narratives and we try to communicate through pictures and in our artwork. And now the challenge is, how do you present yourself through words? And those words for an artist's bio have to be short. And that is challenging when you have to write less than more. So essentially, what is a bio? Uh, the quote that I have here for you, a human life in its course, right? So um, this idea of like, you are a work in progress, your life changes, and you are going to see that your bio is going to be worked and reworked as you change as an artist, but also you're going to rework your bio and gear it towards whatever job or project or presentation or exhibition that you have to present it for. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. So something to think about. An artist's bio, essentially, is your resume in a paragraph. That's not easy, right? So like I just said to you, bios are typically short text. They don't go on and on. They're not a biography, right? A book that you would read. It's short. And there's some really key information that you want to make sure that you include. So things like your history, where you are from, your education, your training, where has your artwork been presented, and honors and awards that you've received. And like I just said previously, you're going to tailor your bio to the particular situation that you have, that is required, it's required for, right? So different jobs or different exhibitions, you're going to keep changing it. One thing, I, or two things rather, I really want you to keep in mind is to be really specific and always ask yourself, Am I showing or am I telling, right? So show, don't just tell. You really want to create a picture about you and your life and yourself um, as an artist in your bio. And another thing to keep in mind, you can see that like really nice piece of uh, juicy watermelon that is sitting down there in the corner, is think about writing seeds and not the whole watermelon. So when you write your bio, you want to hone in on the little details or little detail that makes you you, that's going to make you stand out as an artist. And really think about crafting a bio that are about these tiny little seeds that after the person reads it, then they understand the larger picture. You don't want to start big and you don't want to make these overarching statements when you're writing a bio. So let's look at a few of these um, for examples. And the first ones that I'm starting out with are mine, right? So you can, you'll see how you can get to know me um, from my bios. And these are not necessarily artist bios, but I have an art background and I have an academic background and I often have to write a bio for the various projects or jobs that I have. You are going to see that bios often come in different sizes. They're short, medium, and long. So let's look a little bit through these three before we look at artist bios a little more specifically. So most recently, um, I got a job at the Hofstra University Museum of Art as the communications director. And I have to write a bio, I had to write a bio about myself. So I have, I mean, my, my CV, it can be three, four pages long, right? I've had a long 
relationship with art and museums and the academic world, but I had to write a short bio. So for an art museum that's on an academic campus, I really wanted to hone in on the things from my background that related to this job in particular. Like I worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I do have a background in merchandising, marketing. I've worked with design and curatorial departments, right? Because there's a communications position that I have. I need to craft the image of this museum and kind of present it to the outside world. So I want people to know I have a really solid background in that area. I also have a solid background because I've teach on so many different college campuses as an adjunct professor. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that in my bio as well. And if you just kind of skim down, you'll see that I mentioned two of the colleges that have a little bit of name recognition, right? So that people know if they're looking, if they're on Long Island and they, they read this SUNY Farmingdale and LIU Post. And again, I had to make another choice because I, I teach so many different art classes and art history classes. I felt that featuring American art history and history of graphic design would be the two, the many that I teach, that kind of were related somewhat to my position at the um, Hofstra University Museum of Art. Lastly, I mentioned my education. So you're going to see in this bio that I wrote, which is an, considered medium length, and the other two examples that I'm going to give you is where you position certain things is also of key importance. So again, you're kind of thinking, what's the job or the exhibition or the presentation? And then you're looking at your resume and really handpicking um, from your background how it relates to that position. Another example. Another example here is my academic bio. So this is a bio that was posted at one of the colleges that I teach at. And I wanted to mention my position as a lecturer. I wanted to mention some of the classes that I teach. And I also wanted to mention that I, in this, at this particular school, I teach one of the freshman seminar classes. So if someone goes onto the website and they wanna read a little bit about professors who teach these freshman seminar classes, I wanted to identify myself as such. I also wanted to let my students know that I do a lot of writing assignments. And I just mentioned one conference that I had presented at recently. Lastly, I mentioned my current research, something that I am kind of investigating an ongoing project that I have, and it happens to be an interest that I have in World War II and artists that were purged from Europe um, during that time period. So I wanted to mention something, you know, that relates to my academic studies beyond what I just do in the classroom. And this would be considered a short bio. And you can see in length, it is much shorter. And again, I had to go back to my resume and really pull out very specific details that would be relevant to teaching on a college campus. And, and these are the items that I included. A longer bio would be the one that I'm showing you here. Now, I had the opportunity, um, which was unfortunately canceled because of this um, pandemic that we're dealing with. I was supposed to be in sp over spring break with students in a Paris study abroad trip. And unfortunately that got canceled. But uh, the reason why I'm including this is I had to present a bio um, for students who were thinking about coming on this trip with me. So they might've known me from having me in class, but if they didn't know me, this is how they would get to know me to think about traveling overseas and spending a week with me in Paris. Also, considering the audience who would be re who reads your bio are parents, right? So this would be parents who'd be going on to the college's website and seeing, well, who is this person and what is her background? So you're going to see in this instance, and you can see I've highlighted in red on these past few images, things that are really important that are the facts that I pulled from my resume that I felt needed to be included in these specific bios. You're going to see here that I start off with my education, right? That I want if you're, if you're thinking of traveling with me, I want you to know that not only do I have my master's degree in art history, but I give you information about my thesis, I give my undergraduate information, and I even go so far as to say a little bit of extra work that I did when I took drawing classes at the Art Students League. So really I wanted to start with my education. If you're thinking of sending your kids with me, this is, this is my knowledge in the content area. If I'm taking children, not to, actually not children, but rather college students abroad for a week, right? I also want people, the students and parents to know that I have a lot of experience with students. And I list the different colleges 
that I teach at. So again, the idea of who's my, who is your audience? Who is my audience for this longer bio? And really kind of think about pulling out those seeds and writing that and including that in this bio. This one's a little bit longer. You see it's two paragraphs and you can see here, I really wanted to mention some awards that I received. So I did mention a grant that I received, a conference that I wrote at, uh, I presented at rather. And again, I mentioned my academic research and projects that I'm working on, which again, uh, involved World War II and 19th century modernist painting and, and what I had mentioned previously. I did lastly mention um, the new position that I have, which is at a museum on a college campus. Because again, this whole trip is about taking students to museums, studying art um, in Paris for a week. So I really wanna make sure that I'm kind of convincing whoever's reading this that I have the background for that. So those were three examples, my three, you know, three of my examples for a short, medium and long bio. And I'm gonna go a little bit further explaining how that relates to an artist's bio in, in this kind of second half of the presentation. So the best way that I wanted to do this is to kind of share an email that I received from an artist. It's just a, hey there, you know, I was just asked to judge a craft beer design competition that will be national. Are you available to write a bio for me? Of course, sure, of course I am. Give me a little bit of information. And I asked this artist some questions and he also sent me lists of information like you see here. Some past design experience, some places that he worked at, his, has his own business. And then he started to give me a little bit of information about name recognition and brands that he had worked for. So I kind of read through all of this. And he then also presented to me some bios that he had written on his own. And that was great, right? And you can see here, a long bio, a short bio, and an even shorter bio. And I'm not gonna kind of go through and read all of this to you, but you of course can you know, pause this and go back and reread these. So you can kind of see a little bit of the language and how it differs. So I was happy that he sent this to me because right, this gave me a lot of content. But after reading the long, short, shorter bio, it's great that he even had this to start with, not a lot of this had to do with craft beer. And if he wanted to really highlight that, we, need to, we needed to write a whole new bio that honed in on that part of his background. So this is what, um, what we kind of came up with. And you can see here what's highlighted in red are the details, the seeds that I want you to focus on because after reading all of that information, looking at all of his background, I couldn't use all of it. I had to extract the information that was relevant to this craft beer connection. So first and foremost, like I mentioned his name, and I talk about the fact that he is wonderful at enticing and connecting with the consumer, regardless of the product, product or audience, right? So that almost kind of references this idea that he has a really vast background, right? We're kind of acknowledging it in that sentence. If you go down into the second paragraph, you see that what I have highlighted now I'm going into the very, very specifics and how his background relates to anything that has to do with beer, wine, liquor. The next sentence, or the next few sentences in that second paragraph, I literally list them, right? Like Blue Point, Yonkers, True Cider, Great South Bay, and the list goes on. So right in that second paragraph, you're getting name recognition about companies that he has had a background working for. The third paragraph, you can see what's highlighted in red, this idea that he has this background in branding, packaging, and marketing. So if he's going to be a judge, he kind of knows what he's looking for in this national competition. And then I do go on to list a few non-beer related projects that he worked on, but again, that have name recognition. Last paragraph, I kind of give a little bit more of a general kind of not acknowledgement to his long career that he has had, awards that he's won, magazines that he's been featured in, right? Um, a VIP artist for Long Island. And then look at the last sentence. That's when I kind of mentioned that his fine arts background also is involved in the work that he has done at Sotheby's Auction House. We know Sotheby's, Christie's, these are big auction houses. Again, emphasizing that name recognition, but putting that down at the bottom, right? So it's not the first thing that we're looking at, even though it's a big name, but we've placed it 
in the last line, and that's what the reader is left with. So again, this idea that you are writing your bio with your resume next to you, right? So you literally can, can think about what have I done that relates to this specific project? And this is what the final uh, project looked like. We used a graphic of one of his images. We thought about the layout of the text. We thought about the placement. And he was really happy with what he was able to present for this craft beer competition where he was a judge. Now, another artist had come to me and said really essentially the same thing. He wanted a bio a little bit, a little bit longer um, for his website. And he too gave me a lot of information that he had about his education, jobs that he's worked on. And I kind of went through it and rewrote the bio for him. So what I'm gonna do here is show you some of the things that he had written and tell you why they didn't work. So if you just look at the first paragraph here, he really kind of just mentions himself. He is an award-winning artist and doesn't really give you a strong intro. He doesn't really kind of build anything up about his career. He, we also, we know that this is a website because we're on his website. That's where we are. We are. That's where we're reading all of this. So to even mention it, it's kind of like a redundancy. So we don't get a strong statement in the beginning and we don't need to mention that it's a website. So we can take that out. Now, the next paragraph, if you really kind of look at what he has written, well, it's lovely what he's written, but really he's only listing the titles of artwork. I, as a reader, am not getting any information about materials or, or background or even a description of any of these specific paintings. The third paragraph, now really the only detail in this third paragraph that, that you know, kind of really jumps out, again, is the website. Now he does mention, you know, again, a little bit, this McDivitz series that he spoke about in the first and second paragraph, but I still don't really have any seeds. I, I don't have anything to hold on to that tells me about his actual work. The last paragraph is really kind of, a, a gives you a little bit of information. We start getting a little bit of description, of a description, but it's almost too late. And it's really only like the first sentence, which is a really long sentence, where I'm starting to get a picture of golf courses or paintings of children and grandchildren, things like that. And what we have is information about purchasing the art, but again, we still don't have any details about his background, why we should even consider buying a painting from this artist. So again, you can see the notes that I have there written in red, along the side. And this was, a, this was something to start with. This was great for me, you know, to sit down um, and read through, but I then worked with the artist and we had come up with a little bit more to kind of go by, a little bit, a little bit deeper. Um, so we re reworked that first sentence. And if you kind of read that first sentence, it really is a very direct introduction. It gives us a little bit of information of his style, and how many years he's been working. The next paragraph goes into specifics about materials, awards, and museums that he's been represented in. Now the third paragraph, we go even, even more seeds, right? We go even deeper, listing specific authors, publishing companies, titles of book series that he's worked on, the number of projects that are involved in just kind of one series that he worked on. And again, really honing in on those name recognition brands. Now, if you're an artist and you're not working necessarily with brands, again, this is where you wanna mention who you've worked for, who has hired you, where have you shown your work, like really, really getting specific. So that like, again, when you, were, when you read this, you understand that this is an artist who's an illustrator. Right? If you're more of a fine artist, I wanna finish reading your bio and understand that you have a deep connection with the fine arts world. Getting back to the fourth paragraph here, now we're getting into literally specific types of art, murals, portraits, schools, businesses. We get some locations of states. We get a uh, name recognition of 9-11, the 9-11 Museum in Lower Manhattan. And you'll notice here, one thing that I do like to do is I tend to 
like to kind of pepper a paragraph with specifics, but I really like to end a paragraph with name, with name recognition. Something that people say, aha, I know that. I know that place or I know that artist. And again, it kind of solidifies um, the seriousness and, and, and the work of the artist. The next paragraph, the one that starts Miller studied at New York Phoenix School of Design and Parsons School of Design. Now, one thing I wanna mention here, some artists, you've, you've graduated and you have your degree. This is where you would put that specific degree down, right? But some artists, like the artist here, studies at a variety of different schools and maybe didn't finish, and that's okay, that, that's fine. But you want to still mention the fact that you were at these different locations. So in a, a way of kind of getting around that, getting in the back door is saying you studied there. So maybe you studied at three different schools and you didn't get a degree, that's how you would present it. When I took classes at the Art Students League, I didn't do a certificate program. I just studied there and I took several classes, but I really wanna mention that because it was an important part of my artistic career um, and education as well. So that's what I have here. Uh, where he studied, no degree, no degree, but how we list them all. And then ends with this big name, like he may not have gotten the degree, but look at who he studied with. He was a personal student. He's trained under rather, rather Harold Ransom Stevenson, who was a student of Norman Rockwell, which again, kind of validates his academic experience and his training. So you want to always include what kind of training you've had. Don't dismiss anything. You know, you might, might say, oh, it's not important, but you know, make sure you include your training. And then last but not least, that paragraph on the bottom has been now reduced. Like if you were to, you know, if you stop this and you go back and you look at the previous paragraph, that last paragraph has been reduced to like three lines of where you can contact the artist and how you can purchase his work. Because we're not starting with purchase his work. We're building a case, right? Why you should Look at, the, look at the work of this artist because he has this long standing career, because he works in these materials, because he does this kind of work, right? And you wanna be really specific. So by the time someone's thinking about getting to that website, they understand your background and a little bit about your personal biography. And this again is a great example of what a long bio would look like. So short, uh, we looked at a medium one, a long one, and the next image, the next slide here, oops, sorry about that. Um, this is the completed piece. So this is what the final project looked like. And we put this on his website and we included an image of the artist working, a little bit more traditional, um, and it just kind of came out really nice. And he was really happy with how this worked on his website. Now, an example of a short bio is what you see here. And you're gonna be asked to write short bios. These are harder. These are definitely harder because you now have to take your resume and everything you've done and you have to compress it, right? And you have to really be selective. And editing is going to be really key here and really kind of sticking to that mantra of show, don't tell. Literally show the reader um, what you've done. So there's, they, they walk away with this visual picture of your life's work, right? Not your work, because that's the artist's statement, but your life and, and your experience with art. So a few things here. If you look at the first paragraph, immediately we kind of go into who the artist is, where she lives, the mediums that she, use, that she uses as an artist, location, of where she is not only living, but also where she does a lot of work. Now, I wanna mention this idea of something really specific, a real great example of show, don't tell. Right in the second line, her influence. Her work draws from a penny arcade of visual influences, and she lists them, right? And she just kind of goes right down the list. And it, you instantly, within like the second sentence of this bio, have an understanding of what the artist is about. So she's not, she's not wasting any time here. She then goes right into her exhibitions, her awards and her grants. And I do wanna comment here, that little note that I have with that asterisk, interested clients can look up specific details and get more information. So that's also another important reason why you mention specific places that you've exhibited, specific awards or grants that you've received. Because someone, I know I can promise you this, they're going to go and look that up. So always make sure you're telling the truth, right? 
but also make sure you're giving that information out because you're really giving um, the reader a little, again, a bio of, of what you've done and they can look up these different awards or grants, et cetera, or places where you've shown uh, specifically. If you notice here in her first paragraph, again, the way that we've listed everything, really think about what you're saying first, what you're saying second, and here uh, the last sentence or the last part of the sentence is, and a Robert Rauschenberg Foundation Artistic Innovation and Collaboration Grant in 2013. Not only is it the most recent, right? You can see she listed everything in chronological order. Not only is it the most recent, but again, there's that name recognition of Robert Rauschenberg. So someone in the art world is reading this, they're going to that kind of end that paragraph with that. The next paragraph continues to list achievements. And again, think about chronological order, right? You don't, you don't either, either, either do it one way or the other, ascending or descending, either do your most recent to, you know, the most in your past or the opposite, but just be consistent. So she's always kind of going, you know, moving up. You can see in that first paragraph, 2004, you know, 2013, 2010, 2011, 2013, and the second paragraph is the same. Don't flip-flop it. Be really consistent with that. And chronological order, giving a timeline of your achievements on a short bio is a great way to kind of get the ball rolling. And I'm sure, no doubt, I mean, I know this artist left things out. So things that were too far in the past, uh, less relevant, were excluded from her bio. At the very end is where she lists her education, her degrees, and her current profession. So again, there's no right or wrong in what you put first, second, third, but um, if it's a short essay, you really want to punch it out right in the first paragraph, kind of really listing all of your accomplishments first, and then kind of moving um, through, through the piece. And again, he or she ends with her education at her most current profession. It's a great example of a really successful short bio. Getting started. Now, how do we do this? You know, and, and how do you do this, right? It's really overwhelming. My best recommendation to you is to go and read other artists' bios. You know, you can go to the library, you can look up on your computer artist biographies, and I don't mean biography big book, I mean the short bios like we're talking about and highlight the ones that you like, because you're going to start to see there's going to be three, four, five that you're like, I like that. I like that writing style. And then ask yourself, do you like the ones that are direct and concise? Or do you like the ones that are a little more descriptive with flowery, la flowery language? And then you're going to start to kind of, you know, develop where your bio is going to go. So this will help you harness your writing style and really importantly, allow you to find your authentic voice when you're writing about yourself. So that's why it's important, read other people's bios, but stay true to yourself and see what resonates with your voice. Avoid cliches. You don't need to be trite. You don't need to state the obvious and be original because this is about you and your background. So while you're being inspired maybe, or trying to figure out your own personal writing style, again, make sure you hold, hold true to who you are. Here are a few tips for you. And these really come in handy. Write in the third person, right? In a bio, you never want to say I, he, she. You know, again, you can stop the video, you can go back, you can reread the artist bios, you can reread my bio. like. It's always she or your name or his name um, is how you should refer to yourself. They always should be less than one page, right? We've talked about long, medium, and short, but even the long one is just a few paragraphs. Have several versions, right? That's what I just kind of mentioned and I'm reiterating here for you. One that's less than half a page, one that is two to three sentences, and one that's somewhere you know, in between, like the last one, like the artist Kelly Bell. Adjust your bio to the particular professional activity. And you may need multiple bios, not just in length, but in content. And you saw the artist that I showed previously, right? That he had them handy for me. He had a longer, you know, short and shorter bio, but none of them related to the craft brew contest that he, that he needed one for. So, I mean, I know I, for myself, I have many different bios. Revise, 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 but keep all older versions to reuse language. And that's really important here. Don't delete anything. Have a folder on your desktop and just 
date everything and put the job title, you know, the job that it's relating to, you know, on the, on the title of it and put it in that folder. Because I can't tell you how many times I've had to write something new and I've said to myself, wait a minute, this is kind of similar to the bio that I had to write for something else. And I really liked that language. And I was able to kind of go into an earlier bio, maybe only pull out three or four sentences and then craft a whole new bio, um, but use some material that I already had. Always borrow against yourself. So make sure you're revising, but you're saving everything so you have a body of writing to pull from. You never wanna to have to start from scratch. You always wanna have something to start with. And here's a worksheet for you. Now, let me just say one thing about this worksheet. Stop the video, take a screenshot, and do every single one of these. Don't do half. Don't do just a few or the ones that you find interesting. Really be, you know, really be specific and careful. This is your bio. This is what you're sending out for potential work, right? This represents you. So make sure that you're really careful um, and you kind of go through and check all of these things off. And again, I'll just kind of go through this with you. Um, collect all your professional information always update your resume, right? So that you have like correct dates and names and locations of where you've worked. Of course, include your name, uh, include your current activity or profession. What country are you from? Again, all of your training, schooling, education, apprenticeships, anything that you've done that enhances your body or has enhanced your body of work, don't discredit it, include it. Because then again, remember, you can always go back and edit it out but you also might realize there was some unique experience that you had that maybe someone else didn't have that is relevant and important. Um, and again, there's a note here, if you've studied somewhere but did not achieve a degree, you can always just say you studied there and list the university, college, uh, et cetera. Any other experiences, like I said, any unique experiences that you've had that has led you to um, your profession or this particular activity, be, careful and be specific, right? You wanna give a lot of details in your writing. Exhibitions, performances, publications, awards, grants, fellowships, residencies, any other activities or employment that is relevant. And again, I have this last disclaimer here. Keep all designs, lay, you know, keep all of your designs and your layout, uh, your font consistent with your resume and your personal artist statement. So, if you have a personal design that you like on your resume and a font, then your bio should be done in the same format as well as your artist statement. So if you were sending all three of these potentially out for a job or an exhibition or some kind of activity or project or grant or residency or anything, there's a real consistency in your presentation. And that just kind of makes you look more professional, which is important because you're competing with a lot of other people. So you wanna be polished. Another um, page that I have here for you, and again, I know there's a lot of information, you know, here on this page, but I want you to um, really kind of, again, take a screenshot and keep this handy when you are writing. Always edit your work. You know, go through your work and go through the sentences. Go through grammar and usage. Go through spelling. Go through the mechanics of the piece. Another good piece of advice is read your bio out loud. Right? Every time I write something, I always just sit in front of my computer and I read it out loud. And I catch a lot of errors that way. I also think if something kind of, you know, sounds kind of awkward or how clear it is, and you get a real sense of your work when you read it out loud. And if you can have someone else edit it for you, all the better. You know, really kind of have more, the more eyes that can read your bio as it relates to a project or a particular job that you want, um, that's also a really good idea. So you can kind of see if there's like a nice marriage between the two. So 